I am supposed to be a guest on the show tonight. Hmm. I'm supposed to be a guest on the show tonight. I don't know why she's having me on her show because, <laughs> I mean, all the accolades and all the things I have done, it just might make me steal her show. She made a mistake trying to put me on her show because, honey, uh, I have arrived. I am number one. I am it. You know, and I don't know why she had me because I'm not sick. She have a bunch of sick people on her show with different illnesses, different sicknesses. I'm not even sick. So I don't know, but uh, I must have beat her here because I don't see her. Any y'all see her? You see how things? I don't see her. You know what I mean? But uh, let me get dogged up, get ready to take take on everything. Uh, uh, you know, I'm getting ready for it. So um, hmm, let me. I might have to give her a holler. Uh, Lisa, Lee, Lee, Lisa, Lisa Baxter. Uh, they know me. They probably don't know her because this is the Lisa. Baxter Show, giving you the 411 in the kidney world. Hello, y'all. How y'all doing? Oh, man, I am glad to see y'all, okay? We got a swinging, beautiful, excellent show tonight for you, so get with it. I want to introduce my guest. Mm -hmm. Happy Sunday to you. I hope you're healthy, wealthy, and wise. How about that? A million blessings. My guest tonight, all right, is a retired, she retired 22 years ago for the correctional health services that she was doing. She has a master's degree in healthcare. She's an administrator, all right? She is um, an honor society member. Can you say that fast? She's an honor society member. Okay, and she's a warrior of a certain type of back disease that have about 12 or 15 letters that I can't say, but it start with an S. I'm going to try that. The spondylitis is a lot of the nest of this uh, warrior. That's the kind of warrior she is. How about that? We have Adrian Pridgen Brown on the Lisa Baxter Show. Welcome, welcome, and welcome some more. Woohoo! Come on, girl. <laughs> Hey, Adrian. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> How are you? How are you? How are you? Alive and kicking. Alive and, kicking. and we're going to get and this that's thing. What we huh? Yes. We're going to get this thing rolling and started. You're a natural, so I'm not even worried about you, girl. I ain't worried <laughs> about you. All right? So, All right. Welcome to the show. And I want you to tell me a little bit about the job that you retired from. Tell us a little something about that. I retired from um, prison health services at Rikers Island in New York, um, working with incarcerated men and women and children that was there with their um, their mothers. And um, it was, you know, I did quite a few men. I did my uh, 23 years there before I retired. And um, mm -hmm. it was um, an experience. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, you had to have learned a lot, you know, um, dealing with people incarcerated. I mean, people are people, you know what I mean? But, you know, I guess in different places, you sometimes you encounter different things. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I've had different jobs myself, a lot of different jobs. And it, even though they, every, all of it has to do with the population of people, you still encounter different things. So what was the best thing about that job, you'd say? Hmm. The best thing, well, actually, it was the, the people that I worked with, the staffing and that I worked with at the time. They were um, very, very um, instrumental in me wanting to pursue uh, a career in caring for people and doing different things of that nature. You know, giving back, I learned a lot of things as far as people, like you said, people are people, you know, so I, um, I learned how to be able to care for, take away the fact that they're incarcerated, and I was able to care for the human being. Wow, wow. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, I've never worked in a prison, but I had a prison ministry, a men, a men, a woman, and a children's ministry dealing with uh, teaching um, religious studies in the, in the youth one. And, you know, doing packages and certain Christmas packages for them, for them to give their children. So, um, wow. 
So um, I enjoyed that. You know what I mean? I enjoyed that. You know what I mean? So, um, okay, so you did this job and um, you liked it and you liked the people that you were For working the most with. Part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right now. Well, well, what made you get into your field? Um, I was very passionate about giving back, um, helping to take care. Um, first of all, I wanted to take care. Of, I started out, let me backtrack. I started out in geriatrics, working in a nursing home. And um, I wanted to care for the elderly because that's always been my passion, to care for the elderly and give back to them and help somebody that didn't have anybody to help them. So oh. um over time and working in a nursing home and different things of that nature, I saw a different opportunity. Well, one of my friends asked me to come to correctional health services and I uh, agreed. And I wound up staying longer than I had anticipated on staying. But um, it's still, it still has its rewards. It has its rewards. Wow, wow. So I guess if they had rewards, I guess the money probably was good. Maybe on the job training. Sometimes I know with jobs like that, anything with the city or state. Yes. Sometimes. Was, um, yes. When it was Ooh. under, um, it was under Montefiore when I first started from the hospital. So they had a lot of benefits for you to go back to school, further your education, and different things of that nature. And so that was good. They had a strong 1199 union that helped us go to school, further our education, and so that was good. But, you know, as things progress with the city, it changes. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ain't never lie. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. You know, things do change with every job. You know, you learn you sometimes you meet some of the same people. But, you know, things change on the job. You know what I mean? You know, depending on what type of boss you have, what type of team you have. All of those things play a great factor in working and in a job, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I know now um, you're an administrator. Um, yes, I retired from um, health care and correction at Rikers due to disability to injury. Due, due to the word that we're having trouble pronouncing, spondylolisthesis. Ah. And that's ah, what I was I break know. <laughs> Wow. Breaking it down, spondylo is Greek for the spine of vertebrae. And the thesis is, um, it means the slip or the slide meaning when the bone and the, the vertebrae slip back and forth, back and forth. And it can be due to injury. It could be due to a genetic condition. It could be due to a few things of that nature, you know, um, a cognitive disorder. It could be due to, um, you know, as far as that, um, they say arthritis or, you know, age, but it's, it affects majority women and, you know, stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons I left um, prison health services at Rikers Island in that capacity. And then I went back to school to get my bachelor's and get my master's in healthcare administration because um, even being told I had a disability uh, from the spine and all of that stuff, I know we're going to get to that, but that made me say, you know what, I want to be in that, I want to go further into healthcare. I want to um, help those that don't know you know, and in, mm. within the facility, even help train some of the nurses, tell people how you can mm. um, give care to other people and provide the tool. Because I don't believe that you can require a nurse to do something and don't give them the tool to do it with. I think it starts at the top with the administrator. So that's why I wanted Ooh. to become one so I can wow. make a difference and I can advocate and fight for my staff. Whoa, whoa, girl, girl, that was a fiery message right there. I almost started shouting or running. I ain't mad at you. That's what it's all well, about, you know. Girl. It's nothing like doing a job and knowing how to do it, you know, because you start, you know, you start as you clam up or what have you. And it's good when you know that because you already know what kind of job they did because you had it yourself. You know the problems with the job and then you meet it head on. Girl, stop your mess. Yes. That's what you got to do. And then you cared about geriatrics. Sometimes people put, you know, the elderly or the seniors away and they have a lot to offer. They have a lot to give. They got a lot of wisdom and stuff to teach. I think I don't care what age you are. You always got something to do and say. They care about kids, too. You know, let them shut up. Well, it teaches you. Know, it humbles you. It teaches you patience and it humbles you. 
You know, it really teaches you patience that you have to have a heart for it because just like anything else, it can get testy, it can get trying, but at the same sure. time, you know, I help care for my elderly parents and I, God willing, I'm going to get old and I'm going to get elderly. And one thing I always say, I believe that you get back what you give out in some form because I don't believe God has us here for, for uh, he has us here for a purpose so I believe that our purpose is to serve humanity and I just believe God every day even in my situation and in my state that he strengthens me daily so I can still give back and still you know because you go through a lot when you feel that I was decide, I was um, told I was going to be I was disabled at 45. And mm -hmm. I had to learn how to do things all over again. I had to learn how to walk based on the surgeries I had to have for the um, for my condition. Um, I lost the use of one of my legs. I had to go through a whole lot of rehab to get back to, you know, and I had people to care and help me. So yes. some people don't have that. So I want yeah. to make sure and advocate that people can have those things, you know, and be able to give back. So I'm grateful every day. Do I have pain? Yes. Did, was the surgery 100% successful? No, in my mind. But at the same time, I want to advocate for people to tell them, do your research. Learn all you can learn. Like y'all show when you saying, um, be good to your kidneys and your kidneys to be good to you, be good to your yeah. spine, be good to your bones, be good to your back, <laughs> be good, be good to whole all those things, and they'll be good yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I deal with bone disease and stuff too and I deal with stuff with my back and I had some procedures done to my back and today I felt like I couldn't hardly get up when I was getting up earlier and then I had picked the baby up from downstairs he's one and I don't know why I keep picking him up from the floor I pay for that every time I do that but it was, I thought he was so cute he wanted me and everything and boy after I couldn't get out of bed I said I see him again I'm not picking him up and he was crawling on me today so he jumps his great aunt all the time. But um, yes, you know, you 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 really got to do what you need to and have to do. I know when I met you, because um, I know you're a woman of faith, we met in a church and yeah. um, we ended up being prayer partners and stuff like that. And you could barely walk then. And this, and our I relationship will never forget you for that. We didn't even. And that's one thing. Anything you ask of me, I will do it. I remember you, uh, when the uh, bishop, I know it's out of church uh, forum, but when the bishop asked for someone to stand behind me because I could barely stand to pray and be there for me, you didn't know me from a hole in the wall and you stood behind me and you was just, you know, in all my recovery, you would call the house and you hadn't even, and I remember you know, and pray for me. And, and my husband yeah. at the time would hold the phone and, and oh, the church, lady from the church, she wants to pray. And I mean, that right there made me say, you know what, Adrian, you got to give back to people that can't help themselves because somebody helped you. And I will never forget that, Lisa, never. And you had your own illnesses and your own, I didn't even know you was on dialysis at the time. You know, so you was not even strong in your own body, but you stood for me. And that's why God stands for you today. I believe that. You a sweetheart. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm trying to finish this show. Um, I never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Steve Belcher got a show after this. He gonna be on fire. I ain't mad at him. <clears throat> Woo, that was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for such a tribute to God be the total glory. Yes. You know, um, I love you and thank you so much. Now you relocated. Now what makes you yeah. relocate? Where are you relocated to, if you don't mind saying? I relocated to Maryland. I left from, uh, New York. I relocated to Maryland um, on a journey to uh, uh, assist others because my um, my senior aunt has Alzheimer's. My mom passed away. Her oldest sister had Alzheimer's. And because I was retired and I had more time, I wanted to be closer to her and to be able to help her in the situation that she was going through. Because uh, one day we all, God willing, may not have to get Alzheimer's, but God willing, we all get old. So somebody needs to be able to help us. And that's yeah. one of the things that pushed me to come to Maryland. And and I, I love it. I'm, I miss I miss y'all in New York, but uh, uh you <laughs> we miss you. But I understand, I miss you it know, as often as I can before Corona. I know. Is, you know, oh, y'all got right. Corona, so 
<laughs> oh, caught up ocean, shine low, don't start nothing. You know, <laughs> Lord help us, it's everywhere. But um, yeah, so you 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 moved over there, and and that's nice because it's good to be there for your family and with family. That's what family need. I am trying to prepare myself for when I get older, since I don't have any children. I used to tell my husband when he was alive that we better be careful because we was going to name the children uh, Ephraim and Hannah. We better put something in writing so they don't throw us in a home. And, you know, we want things right. So if we wanted to stay in our house, we want things in writing legally. So, you know, put your stuff in order, whoever's listening. You know, you just that's never you, know. You, that's important. That's important. And, you know, I always have a running joke, you know, with my son. I'm like, I try to be good to people because I don't want him to put me in a corner somewhere playing with my lip and nobody and drooling and nobody helping me. So I try to help people whenever I can, you know. So, oh, yeah. And I have a passion. My desires here is to open my own assistant living. So I'm working on that aspect as well. So there'll Ooh. be a, a facility for those that need. You know, so I got a lot of pots, a lot of things going on in the fire right now. I'm believing God it's going to work out. Yes, it is. And if you need yes, me to come is. down to anything, any kind of workshop or help, you know, as a social worker, uh, you know, I'll send stuff, I'll give stuff, and I'll bring stuff. You will, Lisa, and you'll keep us all on point. And that's another thing, what I was saying as far as even with um, when you have spinal issues and stuff, people don't realize that it can the treatments that's for it, um, medications and um, the ibuprofen to all of those can affect your kidney. So it is related. It does tie in together. The drugs and the different things they give you um, is processed in the liver and in the kidney. So it can cause a lot of, you know, harm. It can raise your blood pressure because you're in pain. Raise high blood pressure can damage your kidney. So it's a lot. It goes hand in hand with your organization, what y'all stand for. So we all in this together. Yes, we are. Yes, yes. we are. Wow. Wow. Do you know the name of any of the medicines or do you, you know? Yes. Well, for any me. But for me or is this for, that website? for the name of that, you know, for that sickness, is it, you know. Does it have well, the list of medicine? Because in the beginning, they try to do, they do um, steroidal drugs. They do, they try you to do um, non-steroidal drugs first. They try to okay. do stuff like ibuprofen, naproxen, and all those things to help manage your pain. But that damages the kidney. And as they move oh, up yeah. to higher yeah. drugs and stuff like that, yeah. I have allergies and sensitivity to them. So I couldn't take any of those. So it's like wow. live with chronic pain. Because I couldn't uh -huh. take morphine, I can't take codeine, I can't take anything that they would help you for pain. I can't take Demerol, I can't take the inject, all of those things. So the next step was to do surgery. So I've had that, then I've had degenerative arthritis in my spine, and then they told me I had some scoliosis in my spine, and then a lot of different things, so it messes with your mind. So then when it starts messing with your mental status, that started being, you know, causing other problems. But thank God I had a strong family support system. I had a support system in New York. I have a support system here in Maryland. So I'm blessed. I, wow. You know, wow. Do I Even with all of them? Do I get, you know, but at the same yeah. time, you know, I have my five minute pity party, shake it off and keep it moving. So I'm blessed. <laughs> all you need is five in a minute, huh? Holla! Well, <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, I do praying, I do laughing, I mean, I watch comedy yes. and stuff like that, I go for a walk, I take myself out, I try to spend time with family, you try to do so much to make yourself feel better, pray, yes. you know, talk yes. to God, oh Lord, no, you know, whatever it would take to get you through it, I'll say my favorite scripture in a minute. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver us out of them all. That's I have to right. talk to talk to my body and I got to talk to my situation huh that's right you're not that's right you're right well you a warrior girl you a warrior in your own right in your own field now do you know anything about dialysis or kidney disease or kidney failure you know somebody I, I know I know somebody that I'm talking to right now firsthand uh -huh. oh beautiful all right all right Lisa Baxter <laughs> 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 all right. Well, I'm glad you learned something from me. That's what it's all about. It's not just to help yourself or help somebody dealing with dialysis. Sometimes it's the caregiver or the family member or the friend. 
Because people yeah. say, oh, I don't know nobody. Nowadays, somebody always knows somebody who's on dialysis or got a kidney disease or had a transplant or something. But I so, learned so much from you. And I had a friend over that um, from high school that started, he passed away and he was on dialysis. And um, I didn't know. And I got sad when I first started seeing, after watching the show and talking to you, I said, wow, he had to actually go through all of that. You know, yeah. and um, with the machine and stuff, and he was resistant. He didn't want to do it, so it's well, like I'm not doing dialysis. But it wasn't really known. I was in high. We was in high school, so he yeah. passed before his thirtieth birthday, and he was uh -huh. on dialysis when he's you know after high school he started with having problem with his kidney. He was overweight, um, so he learned different things. Every Every illness, sometimes we always get upset. Well, I used to get upset about the weight thing. Everybody said, oh, everything. I said, what, skinny people don't have no no health issues? But once well, you get I past... Issues, I couldn't believe it. Right, but once you get past all of those things and really dig deep into um, how each organ and each thing is connected, you know, it makes a difference in how you decide to make the change in your life. It makes a difference yeah. when you say, you know, maybe I shouldn't have that, or, you know, or whatever. I mean, because I have what I want to have, but at the same time, because y'all know, but um, you learn that to be healthy, you have to make better choices. And you have to better educate food yourself. Choices. And you have to educate yourself. Yeah. You do, you do. Because sometimes, I, if I had a good report card at dialysis, then I had a good treat. If my report card was bad or said anything a little off, Lisa didn't get it. I punished my own self. I didn't have to wait for nobody to punish me. I did it myself. So, okay. you know, I learned and I'm still, I, I can still learn something. I'm learning a lot with the transplant and, you know, it's almost four years. So, you know, but is there anybody out there that you could say something to? Maybe it's a woman that's sick with a bone disease, same disease or a similar one. What would you say to that woman out there? What I advice on... I, first, I would say, you know, don't beat yourself up. Have your moment to feel what you feel because no one knows what you feel. You know, sometimes because pain is real. No one knows what you feel, but do your research. You know, that's what I would tell you. Do your research because everybody's not the case book, you know, but you could do it. You can make it, you know, because pain is like can make you feel debilitated where you don't want to do anything, but you can get up and you can still do it. You can mm. move every day. If you can't run, you know, crawl. If you can't crawl, scoot, you know, or something like that. But don't get stuck. Don't stay there. Yes. Yes. Life is not over. Some days it feels like that life is not over. Fix yourself up. Straighten yourself out. You know, put on a new hair. Or something, do whatever you got to do. Make yourself feel good and just know that today might not be a good day, but tomorrow is going to be a better one. My sister tells me that all the time because I call her. Wow. Sometimes I cry, I call and I be crying and bottom in pain or something like that, you know. And then we allow each other to have them our moments of pain, our moments of pity or whatever, and then shake it off. So that's what I would tell any woman. I would tell them it's not over. Your day is not over. You're a beautiful yeah. woman. You can get it together. You can keep it going. You can have it going right. on. Even if that's you got right. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. I crawled up a few steps. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I, call it do my two, I call it do my two step. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You do. I lean on everything. This whole arm in my, this is bruised because I would brush my teeth to cook. I'm leaning with one thing, trying not to fall or try not to put too much on the hips. That's caused a lot of pain in my back and stuff, too. So physical therapy is good, too. I was going to start it again before the corona thing started. But when it's over, I will be back. So I wanted to see what that could do for me. You, you just don't know, but you got to try things. Even the Bible say try all things. You know yes. what I mean? Try physical therapy. Physical therapy will help. Physical therapy. I only liked physical therapy in the beginning because I wanted the free rubs. I'm just going to be honest. That's what I wanted. I didn't use one. I'll give it free. I, my neck bothered me. Got too much other things in it. But Yes. I, yes. Wow. Wow. Well, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Or did we miss anything before you give your shout out? Because I'm going to end the show in a minute. 
No, I just, I mean, Lisa, it's just so many things. I just want everybody to know that how things tie in and you have to do self-care. Doing self-care is very, very important. So that's what that's what I basically want to stress with everybody to do safe kids self care, love yourself, love others, especially when we going through this corona now. We never know. Don't take nothing for granted. Don't take nobody for granted. Air hug everybody. Mm. <laughs> wow. I don't see it, but I know you there, Lisa. There you go. Yeah, when you talk by yourself, we give you the whole screen. How about that? You got it. <laughs> You're not like the lady that wanted to get on the show that wanted to take up my whole show from me. So I'm, I am hear, come on, I want my ear hug now. I'm, I'm sending it all to you and everybody out there. All the guests and the producers, the urban health, all of you, the special groups. I ain't mad at you. Nothing but love for you, baby. Now, who would you give your shout out to, darling? It's everybody. My, I have a, I have such a strong support system that I, I wouldn't want to not shout out anybody. I would shout out everybody. Thank everybody and lottie dottie. <laughs> because everybody's important. And I don't want anyone to feel that they're not important because everybody has impacted my life in some some way from the smallest to the, the oldest. You know, you know, I always shout out my baby because, you know, my number one son. But he's, you know, I'm grateful for him every day as he, you know, and I thank God for just everybody because they're just everybody plays a role in dealing with me. I'm a old, I'm a big package, so I need everybody. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Lisa. I shout you out every day. You know that. Oh, well, I shout I'm you see, back, I'm baby. I'm going to see y'all soon. You know, I don't know how soon because, you know, you know but I'm going to see y'all. <laughs> let, uh, let it heal up. Let it heal yeah, on that's up. That's right. I hear you every day. <laughs> a beautiful you. woman. You are fantabulous. And I was honored to even have you on the show. If there's any, when you start your business, if there's a website or anything like that, let me know. So, you know, we, you know, we could put it out there. If you already know it, feel free to say it. Um, and, and that's just about it. I mean, I appreciate having you. You know, um, the hello. name of mine is going to be Adrian's Way. I didn't make the website yet, but my home is going to be called Adrian's Way. Adrian's Way. You better go ahead, girl. <laughs> Put your name on it. That's right. That's what it is. All right. Love yeah. you. All right, baby. Love you too. And thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you uh, for having me. I, I appreciate you. I hope I've impacted someone's life in a positive way that, you know, it's not over. It's just beginning. You I'm have five this year, and I'm blessed every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my girl. All right. Appreciate you. you. Love you, administrator. Do you think? <laughs> I know. I got to get back to work. They, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. Thank you. All Goodbye. Right. And thank you. All right. Love Bless you. your life. Bless yours. Love you too. Bye bye. I take that. Amen. Whew. Was that a show or was that a show? I know it was. I know it was. You know, people deal with different stuff. So you will see resources on this show. You will see kidney warriors, transplant warriors, caregivers, friends, family. You will see it all on the Lisa Baxter show. But you will learn something from it and you will take away something from it. I love you. Many blessings. Stay well. Stay safe. And stay home. Peace. Mwah. Good night.